Hello guys and welcome to this video. Today we are going to install Go.4.2 for Ubuntu Linux. To start by going to go.engine.org and download the latest version here, the .NET version. And I'm going to save this in my downloads folder. Next, we're going to use .NET 8 for our compiler. So search for .NET 8 in your favorite search engine. Click here on download. Then click here on package manager instructions for Linux. Then scroll down a bit here and you will find Ubuntu. Scroll down a bit more on this page and find the version you're using here. I'm currently using 23.10. So I'm going to grab this guy. Then you scroll down a bit more and you will find the installation instructions right here. So I'm going to click on copy. Then press Ctrl Alt T to open up the terminal. Right click and paste these commands in and press enter. And enter your password when asked for. This is going to take a while to install in the background. So you're just going to minimize this guy. Now we're going to open up the App Center. And here, search for VS Code and press Enter. You will find the guy right here. I'm going to install this guy now. And enter your password when asked for. Then we can open up Visual Studio Code here. Then you want to go here to Extensions. Then search for C Sharp and press Enter. You want to find this guy here, the C Sharp on the diamond shape here. So click on this guy and click on Install. And if you want to, you can also install the C Sharp Dev Kit. So I'm going to click Install on this guy as well. We can now minimize this guy. Next, we can open up the zip file that we downloaded. And I'm going to extract this to my go dot folder that I have. Like so. And here we have the files. Next, we want to add this to our start bar. To do this, we need to install the main menu handler. So open up the app center again. Then you want to search for a la carte in here. Press enter, change this to Debian packages. And you will find this main menu application right here. Mine is already installed, but you click on install here. Then once it's installed, just press the Windows key and type in menu. And you will find it right here. Then you want to click here on programming or whichever folder you want your executable link to be in. You can see I have a 3.5 and I have 4.1 here already. I click on new item. I click here on name, name this guy to be go.4.2. I click here for the command. I'm going to scroll down a bit here to my go dot folder. Then go here to 4.2 and select executable and click on OK. Next, we want to have an icon for this guy. You can find the icon if you go to github.com, then go.engine. If you click here on go dot, scroll down a bit, you will find the icon right here, logo.png. So just click on this guy. You right click and I click save image as. You can save this wherever you want. So I'm just going to overwrite my current icon in my Google folder right there and click on save. Like so. So again, minimize. Next, you click on this icon here. And you go to your folder where you downloaded the icon. And you click on that guy and click on OK. And you can add a comment as well if you like to. And click on OK. Now the icon has been added. You see, I have the 4.2 already, so I have two of them right now. So I just wanted to show you the process so I can delete my latest edition, like so. Now I click on close. And now, if you press the Windows key, and you type in go dot. To add this to your launch bar, you just right click this guy, and you click on pin to dash. And it's going to be down here. All right. We can now start the application. And here, you just click on cancel. You click on new. You click on browse. I'm going to go into my go dot folder here and click on create folder. I'm going to call this test. Click select folder, click on create and edit. In here, click on to the scene, rename this guy to main, press control S to save the scene, click on create folder. Let's call this scenes, press enter. And let's save this guy with a capital M with main.tse in here. Click on save. Next, click on editor. Editor settings and scroll all the way down here and click on .NET editor, this guy there, and make sure this is set to Visual Studio Code here in the drop down. Click on close. Next, right click the main node, click on add child node, find the sprite 2D in here, and click on create, then drag in the icon.svg file to this guy. Now let's move this a bit. In the Y position, 350 pixels, and in the X position, 100 pixels. So a starting position for this guy. Next, right click the main node, click on attach script, change this to C sharp, and let's click on create. 
just save the file. Next, you want to click here on play. No main scene has ever been defined. Select one. So click select current for the main scene. And it's going to be a load the project files and everything for us. So we have our icon here. We can now close this guy. Let's go back to the Visual Studio Code Editor. And in here, if you type in GD dot and press control space, you can see that we don't have IntelliSense yet. It takes a while for it to find IntelliSense. So if you just press control space a couple of times, it will pop up for you. And now we can do GD dot print and say hello. Let's save the file. Let's run this guy again. You can see we have hello down here with two O's and one L. <laughs> anyway, a problem some people have is that, hey, I don't have any output here. And that's because you can actually turn off the output by clicking on these icons here. So you can toggle the visibility for your standard output messages. And <laughs> I encountered this feature and I was like, hey, where's my output? So just make sure you click on this guy here. And you can turn off uh, warnings and errors as well here. So if they're clicked, it's going to work fine. All right. Let's go back to the script. So here we have the code. I'm going to make a quick update in here. So we're going to add some speed. And we're going to have a reference to a sprite. It's going to grab our sprite2d node, which is this guy up here. And then in the process method, we're going to update the sprite position with the speed that we have defined up here. Multiply with the delta. And if the sprite goes above a thousand pixels, we're going to reset it back to the beginning of the window. All right. And now we want to be able to debug this program. It's going to put the debug point in here. Then we're going to go here to run and debug. I click here on create JSON launch file. Click on C sharp here. And now we want to add two configurations here. So find the blue button down here, add configuration and click on this guy. Then start by finding the attached to a .NET process. We can maximize this guy as well. Then click this button again and click on launch executable. We can remove this pipe transport. It's not needed. And now what we're going to do is to actually set our path to the go.executable. So we can empty this string there. We can bring up the terminal. Then go to your go.for.to folder. Find this here in go. Just copy the string here. Like so. Right click and copy. I'm going to paste this in here. And I missed the tilde character. Just bring that with you when you copy the string. Then I'm going to add the executable name as well, which is this guy. So I can select this name here, right click and copy and add it at the end like so. So if I now click on play here, it's going to say I could not find the task build file. So we can click here on configure task. Then click here on create task JSON file from a template and click on .NET Core. And if we click on play again now, it's going to build a product and it's going to start. You can see here that our breakpoint was hit. So if we do like this, so let's click here on continue. You can see it's going to run. And when a thousand pixels is hit, it's going to stop. And we can press F10 and step through our program and so forth. Then we can bring up to go to the editor. And let's just click on play. This guy is now running here. Select .NET Core Attach from the dropdown list. We're going to minimize so we can see what's going on in the background here. And we can click on start debugging. Let's search for go.in in here. And if you hover these guys, you can see this is running test remote debug TCP. And that's the guy we want to connect to. And now we are connected to the process and we can step through this as well. Let's disconnect. All right, guys. This is how you set up the go.nu version 4.2 in Ubuntu Linux using .NET 8 and Visual Studio Code as your code editor and debugger. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and see you in the next video. Bye for now.